Welcome back, everybody. This is our Algebra 2 uh, Function Foundations Lesson 7, Key Features of Functions Homework Review Part 1. And uh, so, just welcome, everybody. And I want to give a shout out to my in laws, uh, Joshua and Jane Toy. They uh, haven't seen them for a while because of this whole uh, virus situation. And just want to thank them for watching my videos. <laughs> it's pretty funny, though. So, but I want to thank them for watching and to give them a shout out to them, too. If you are new to watching this, please, and you find this uh, video helpful, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel for. I guess when I drop more videos. So this is question number one, and we have a piecewise linear function, f of x, which is shown to the right, but it's really underneath. So answer the following questions based on this graph. Evaluate each of the following graphs based on the graph, but each of the questions based on the graph. So, so f of four. Now, when they say f of four, what they're really saying is, what is the value of y on the graph when x equals four? So what we're going to do is we're going to find when x equals 4. When x equals 4, the y value is, well, this point right here. It looks like the y value is going to be 1, so f of 4 will be 1. All right, what about f of 3, negative 3? Well, we'll go when x equals negative 3 all the way down, and so this coordinate here, well, at negative 3, the y value looks like to be negative 5. Okay, so just to make sure, here's negative 5, and that's how it works out. Okay, so when you're asked these questions about graphic-wise, like f of whatever number or whatever the function is and the number inside, the number inside parenthesis is the x value you're plugging into, and they're, what they're asking you to do is find the matching y value on the graph. Okay, so the next question, part B, is state the zeros of f of x. So what are zeros? Well, let's take a look, okay? A zero or root of a function is the value of x that makes the function equal to zero. It is where the graph intersects the x-axis on the graph of the function. Okay, so that's what we're looking for where the graph crosses the x-axis, the x-intercept in this case. Okay, so let's go back to our, our question. Where does the graph cross the x-axis? Okay, so here on the x, we see it happens two places. One right here, so I'm gonna, oops, just gonna circle that point here, and another right here. And so with those values, we see in this case, when x equals negative 5, is it negative 5? 1, 2, 3, 4, yeah, x equals negative 5. And when x equals to 2. Again, the coordinates for each of those points would be, in this case, negative 5 comma 0, and 2 comma 0. Okay, so again, the value of the roots or the zeros of the function are where the graph crosses the x-axis, okay, also known as x-intercepts. All right, so we have now part C. Over which the following intervals is f of x always increasing? So we have like five choices. So, well, what does it mean always increasing? Well, let's talk about what increasing means. Go back to our notes. So increasing. A function is increasing when the y value increases as the x value increases. Another way of looking at it is as we move to the right, the graph is moving upwards. <clears throat> so, so here, so as we go to the right, the graph moves upwards. Now, just so we also know that if we have a function talking about increasing, we should also talk about when the function is decreasing. So a function is decreasing as the y value decreases or goes down as the x value increases. Another way to look at it is that as we as the move to the right, or should move to the right, sorry, I didn't put the word to, sorry about that. So <laughs> the graph is moving downwards. So these are kind of important. You'll be asked a uh, number of times when the function is increasing, when the function is decreasing. And so, and usually it occurs during certain intervals. So we're going to find out which interval for our next question before we ask, um, <clears throat> which interval is the function going to be increasing? So increasing means as we're going, as we're moving to the right, the graph is moving upwards. So from negative 7, so negative 7 is here to negative 3, okay, 
<clears throat> it looks like it's not actually that's the opposite of increasing that's decreasing from negative three to positive five and notice that we're not including the endpoints because of the fact that the idea is that um <clears throat> is that we're uh we those are particular uh different values we're talking about at the particular points though so uh, as we're increasing we're going to be moving always moving upwards okay so uh the idea is that from negative three to positive five that looks pretty good now from neg five to positive five, that we do have a, a period where it does move upwards, but it goes downwards. So the key word is always. Let me underline that word, always increasing. And so not so much for three. So one is no good. It looks like two is good. Just to make sure from negative five to positive three, no, but again, we have parts increasing, but you know, in this case, the part decreasing. So no good there. So our always increasing is from negative three is less than x is less than five in this interval here always increasing okay and then state the coordinates of the relative maximum and the relative minimum of this function well relative maximum relative minimum let's talk about that okay so in this case we talk about relative maxes and mins a relative maximum is point is a point where the function changes direction from increasing to decreasing, making that point a peak in the graph, like a hill, if you will. Similarly, a relative minimum point is a point where the function changes direction from decrease to increasing, making that point a bottom in the graph. Now, the idea is that relative meaning only for that particular small location do we have a relative max or relative min. That relative max would be it will be the highest point of all the points in that particular area. It may not be the highest point of the entire graph because the highest point of the entire function we call the absolute maximum. So the absolute maximum is a point where the function attains its greatest possible value, where the function and of course we can have absolute maximum for an interval, all right. But the idea is that uh, there you can have multiple relative maxes in a particular interval. Okay, it just have to be in the in the particular those particular parts. You'll see that the graph will go up then down. So you have a hill. So consider now a relative maximum point like a hill. Every how many hills we have here? Or how many peaks? And a relative min point is where we have you know a particular value. And again, for a particular for an interval, we can have a a, a number of relative mins. But an absolute minimum point, okay, an absolute minimum point is a point where the function obtains its least possible value. So that is the lowest point in for the function. And in some functions, they don't necessarily have an absolute maximum min because, you know, you can't include infinity because infinity is not a number, it's a car. Okay, so let's go back to the question. So our question here, state the relative maximum point and a relative minimum point. Oh, well, our relative maximum point, well, we can take a look and see in this case, is that um, relative maximum point, so a relative maximum like a hill would be this one here. Okay, so relative maximum, we could say in this case, and that would be in the coordinate of, of uh, 5 comma 3. And a relative minimum point we've already discovered as well too is kind of the lowest point here. That will be in this case, uh, neg three comma five. Okay. So, so a relative maximum is at five comma negative three, and a relative minimum is neg three comma five. Now. One might argue that there are <clears throat> another, there's another relative maximum, highest point in the whole area section. And I might argue in this case that this point here, at that point, at, um, it looks like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, looks like neg seven comma five might also be a relative maximum. So, well, how come that's a relative maximum, Mr. Kong? Well, because in that whole section there, that would be the highest point, all right, in the, of all the points, because all the points kind of go lower afterwards. And the same way, another relative minimum would be 
this point over here. And that looks like 7, 1. So I'm going to put down there is also 7, 1. All right. Uh, just understand because those coordinates are part of our functions, it is the lowest point, you know, of all the, all the you know, not the lowest point of all the points, but in that general area, if you will. So I would also include those two. Okay. Now, ladies and gentlemen, what I'm going to say is uh, because this question is a very long question, I'm going to stop here for part one, and we'll continue with with question number one uh, in part two of of our review of of uh, lesson seven in this case. All right. So I hope you enjoy the video. And in, uh, also, if you can, uh, leave any questions or comments. If you disagree with my other coordinates or relative max or relative minimum, uh, definitely bring them up and explain to me well, why, do you, why you disagree and all. Because, it's, because uh, again, you might say, well, that's a, you know, you said a hill or a valley. Well, yeah, but, but relatively in this case, in that section, that's kind of the highest or lowest points as well, too. And we can kind of discuss that as well, too. I'd love to hear from you guys. I'd love hearing feedback or questions or comments, though. All right. So thank you so much for watching. Appreciate it. And of course, um, please, please make sure that you definitely go over these and give it a chance to kind of try to digest all the concepts here because, you know, watching a video and then, you know, we should always try it out as well too for other questions because I want you guys to get better at the mathematics. Thanks so much for watching. Take care and be safe, everybody. All right. See you soon.